which stats and p organs should you focus on first especially the smaller node upgrades that tremendously enhance your play style let's focus on stats first as you can see i'm main motivity right now for maximum physical attack a strength build i personally i've been actually overdoing it a little bit here with the physical damage there's zero points in technique and advance at this point and the most important stat to actually beef up next to your main strength stand is capacity capacity goes for your overall weight before i tell you why that is so important do not fret roughly halfway through the game with the ground exhibition you can respec your organs and your stats to then redo the whole shebang just have to get there above me you can see your weight right now at 67 out of 119 if i put this ring off i turn slightly heavy which makes me very sluggish and slow moving that's slightly heavy already if I make myself over 80% big heavy, look how slow I'm running and especially rolling. We don't want that. Honestly, you don't even want slightly heavy. As soon as I hit slightly heavy, I start panicking. That's why you also need to look at the weight of your weapons. Each blade and also the handles do have their unique weights. And yes, obviously the big long ones like the big pipe wrench handle 6.8, whereas my tiny police baton is only a 2.0 weight. Pair that together with a hefty blade and you only have nine weight instead of 20.7, the bone cutting saw blade. Why is this so important now? You have your upgrades, and these are your defensive parts, like the arc heavyweight frame, that already weighs 16.2, but gives you 25% physical damage reduction rate. Whereas the lot of frame I already have is at 28, but it makes me slightly heavy. Yep, unlucky. There's also a ring though you pick up throughout the journey, so don't worry, that's the carrier's amulet, which increases your weight capacity. And as you can see, that greatly increases your weight capacity. When going from 103 up to 120. You don't want to waste this though, because there's amazing rings like increases resistance of disruption, increased damage inflicted to puppets, enables dodging even with low stamina. But this ring alone weighs 19.6, making me slightly heavy again. So you might have three amulets to choose from, but you need to also make sure that you can actually wear these amazing amulets. Has a chance of non being consumed when using pulse cells. Great, but I'm slightly heavy again. So I might have to adapt my frame down one or two to even be there. The same goes also for your converters. Your converters also have weight. This has half the weight of the other one, but also a vastly lower physical damage reduction rate. You notice it's actually very important to have capacity at a decent level. I would easily shave off four points of motivity at this point to get more capacity. One thing that got to be said about stats is that you don't get that much damage more for actually beefing up your main stand so for most people it's probably more opportune to get a little bit more vitality and also vigor uh, further up right now at my level you see it there the 63 hard i would be aiming for 25 vitality 15 to 20 vigor capacity also at 25 and then the motivity for my strength build as high as possible to have a more rounded build that just goes easier through the challenges you do enough damage anyways to get the bosses down and especially your damage doesn't really come from your hit 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 because you're mostly guarding in my case then you're going to overwhelm the opponent and you're going to land your ambush attack to really do the super stagger bonus damage for technique and advance technique is good if you're using your legion arm for damage but i use mine mostly for defense and in boss fights i mostly don't use it at all and advance is only for certain weapons that being said even if you have an advanced weapon you can go for alter handle and choose any of the handles and just make it whatever you feel like right i want this to be a b tier motivity scaling no problem i want this to be a tier motivity scaling i can do that i can swap everything over to technique or advanced easy peasy lemon squeezy and yes, I can also make that advanced weapon an S tier advanced weapon scaling if I really feel like it. But you can experiment with that halfway through the game as you can reset your stats. As a rule of thumb for a motivity build, strength build for example, I would do one vitality, one strength, one capacity, then again, vitality, capacity, and motivity, and one vigor. So two points in every stand, then one vigor. Two points in every stand, then one vigor. That's how I slowly beef up my stats to still have a good progression to always feel like you have enough stamina. Now for my P organs, I experimented a lot around, but there is quite some things I already want to change. First, you should always increase your pulse cells up here too. And then last but not least, the enhanced pulse cell recovery. 
as the most important to beef up. That gets followed up by the amulet slot, because yes, having more amulets is just amazing. And there's something you might underestimate, and that is increase the staggerable window. That is increases the time an enemy is staggered. And that is so important in certain boss fights to really not miss this ever. To unlock one of these nodes, you need to fill the two smaller nodes in. And for that, you can choose from four different types. Attack, Survival, Ability, and Item. Most important, per big node, you can only choose one attack type, and then you have to go for Survival, Ability, or Item type, and vice versa. Now in Phase 1, you can choose Phase 1-ers. In Phase 2, you can choose Phase 2-ers. And in Phase 3, you can already choose Phase 3 upgrades. And here I went very early for Enhanced Charge Stagger Attack, which makes your charge attacks stagger more. Very good. Also, right now, I would probably swap over to increase the staggered duration so the enemies just stay longer staggered and you do not ever miss that stagger window. The survival type never seemed important to me, but I have to say the lower damage when discharged is actually good because discharge is when you have used up all your cells, when you have no more heals, when you're trying to regain one. And in that phase, you would take less damage. That's intriguing, but on the other hand, as long as you have cells, this one doesn't play a role. One that has helped me though through the journey extremely is Charge Legion when eliminating an enemy. Yes, that helps you to continuously have your Legion arm charged up. I like to use the hook blade to pull people. You just shoot them, get them in, kill them, get a charge back. Shoot them, kill them, get a charge back. The same kind of goes for the flamethrower. Very nice together with this to never run out of Legion arm. Also, Charge's Fable when a perfect art is successful is incredible. If you like perfect guarding, perfect. You'll get your Fable up continuously to then do those Fable attacks and do tremendous amounts of bonus stagger damage. Which also goes hand in hand with Enhanced Fable Arts attack. Yes, if you do that, it would be stupid to not enhance that. For the item type, there's one you want to pick straight away and that is decreases Ergo up and eliminating an enemy. Because it would be stupid to just not do that. I mean, you can straight up get bonus Ergo. You could also enhance the amount of Legion Magazine. And in the second tier, Special Grindstone Increase Effect Duration. Uh-huh, mm-hmm. Because your Special Grindstone, especially against boss fights when you use the Electricity one or the Fire one, well, it, it goes quite nuts, right? And you want that to be as efficient as possible. And then for Tier 2 on Survival, there's the Pulse Cell Recovery. So, so your Pulse Cells simply heal more. And on Attack, I really choose Increases Destruction Damage to Enemies when a Perfect Guard is successful because I try to perfect guard as much as possible against bosses. The ambush stagger attack is also very nicely because that is this dash to the side, whirl around hit. Dash to the side, whirl around hit, which you will utilize in quite some boss fights because it will be better to dodge there than perfect guard because they're just made to be dodged. Again, don't worry, halfway through you can respec everything, but I hope I could give you some insights in what stats are important, what you should be looking for, and how you can truly never get frustrated during your Lies of Pi journey. If you're now looking for a combat tutorial, there's your video. Enjoy.